I recently uploaded the STLs of my updated printed in place RC car version 1.8 and I thought I'd do an overview of what changed since version 1.0. If you're wondering what happened to version 1.1 through 1.7, well... So the most obvious change is that there's plenty more room now than there was before. I achieved that by reducing the number of gears needed to go from the motor to the axle and I brought the motor closer. To bring the motor so close, I had to thin out the axle a little bit. That means that it is a little bit weaker, but if you're racing on carpet or flat surfaces, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. If you are racing outside on the asphalt, I do recommend putting a two millimeter shaft inside the hole. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. It can even be one of those cheap metal rods that you get at Ace Hardware, or even a two inch nail will work. Now, I'm actually pretty proud of the work I did on this design. Um, given how intricate it was for a printed in place design, but it was also flawed in the fact that it was very brittle. And so you gotta be really careful when I take the motor out. Um, and unless you print in PT PTG, this thing liked to snap a lot. So that had to go. The new method is much simpler. You just have to make sure that the pinion aligns correctly with the other gear, and then you put it inside the hole and done. You can see that the gears are in fact touching. Another very obvious difference is that the old chassis have plenty of holes and the new ones are full. The idea behind this was that I was gonna save a little bit on filament and print time, but the reality is that all this stop and go made the print time longer and the filament savings wasn't all that much. On top of that, the full chassis will be a bit stronger and keep your electronics cleaner. One difference that won't be as obvious is in the steering system. I adjusted the tolerances so everything is a little bit easier to print. I uploaded four versions of the chassis. Two short, two long, two rear motor, two mid motor. So pick whichever you like. As far as which of these will give you more space for electronics, probably the rear motor one. But the difference is negligible. So here's the chassis I built in the tutorial video a few months back, and here's the new chassis populated with the electronics. So it may look like the new chassis is more cramped for space, but the reality is that I am using a two cell battery on this one, whereas with the old one I have a one cell. I also did a little bit of wire cutting on the old one, and this is running the electronics stock with their long wires. And finally, this is running the servo up here on the nose, where here I have the servo in the back. So you can actually get a lot more inside the new chassis. When you drop in the same electronics on the new chassis, you can see it has plenty more space. You can see on the old design, the hook broke off, so I had to use tape to hold the motor in place. That's not going to be an issue with the new design. Remember that with this chassis, you are running plastic on plastic. So if you don't lubricate it, you might risk melting the parts and then you have to throw away the whole thing. Also, I recommend sticking with a 1S battery setup. The chassis can handle 2S, but it is a bit overkill and you're not going to be racing against Kyosho Mini Zs anytime soon. Where are you? So that's it for this video. This has been a passion project that went through quite an evolution and I plan to evolute it further, I guess. Uh, but for now, enjoy the latest version. All right, get out, get out of here.